We have a responsibility to get the work to the streets. MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast. Highways, um, movement of goods, these are things that we rely on every day. Got to have the ability to get their product to market. As long as you're performing, we want to be behind you pushing. Welcome in to another edition of the Extra Mile Podcast presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I'm MDOT Digital Media Manager Paul Katul, and I'm joined by my co-host Will Kraft. Uh, he handles government and constituent affairs here at the agency. And today we're going to do a bit of a special episode. We're going to hone in on a proposed project, State Route 15, Highway 15 project in Laurel. And to talk about uh, this project, we've got District, District 6 Engineer Kelly Castleberry. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hello, and thanks for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. you taking some time out of your day to come talk to us, man. Absolutely. So let's just get straight to it. Can you give us a uh, an overview of what's going to happen with this project? Right. So right now in State Route 15 in Laurel, uh, there is a center turn lane from Interstate 59 north, 3.2 miles. That's the way it is today as we sit here. And right now a lot of the motorists are competing for that turn lane to turn left and so there's a lot of head-on collisions a lot of side swipes a lot of right angle collisions what MDOT is proposing is to come in and place a six inch concrete curb with island pavement in between the curb uh, kind of what we call a median and then place left turn movements at certain locations to make it safe for you to, to make that left turn and in, by doing that, we can reduce the accidents in that corridor. Speaking of accidents, Excellent. I think this is one of the routes we had turned uh, quite a bit of numbers uh, in relation to, Paul, you had some, some statistics, uh, but I'm sure, Kelly, you know firsthand, it's a pretty accident-prone area, right? I mean, right, it is. It's, I think in the state, it's the third most accident-prone wow. corridor in the state. Uh, over roughly a four-year period, we've had 1,150-something accidents, and, and that's, yeah. that's not including, you know, what's occurring every month since we completed that study. Uh, huh. I know the other day I drove down that corridor, and there was a three-car accident right there in the median again. So uh, it is very accident-prone. And like I said before, you've got a lot of people competing for the same real estate, a lot of conflict movement. Sure. Let's go ahead, and I, I just want to read out those stats yeah. because they are staggering. So from January 2017 to uh, December 2021, there's 1,155 crashes, uh, 500 injuries resulted from these uh, collisions, uh, two fatalities, and 500 injuries. Uh, that is significant, uh, and that is – why this project is getting done, correct? Correct. The, the goal of MDOT is to make sure that we move traffic in a safe and efficient way. And uh, those two aspects are why we're looking at this particular project. We can safen that corridor up. We could typically reduce the accidents by at least a third, if not more. That, that's our goal. And then also, uh, with that corridor, you do have a lot of business on that corridor we can provide a little bit more efficiency and make it easier for motorists to get around. I would think too, I don't know if it's kind of an old standard or just something that took place situationally, but I feel like a lot of those highways with that center turn lane, like what we're talking about, are those kind of outdated, kind of most places moving away from that project type? Right, it used to, I would say probably back in the mid to late 80s, the, the, the common standard treatment is once you got enough capacity on your corridor, to come in and allow that free left turn in a center turn lane. And that's what was done in Laurel. It used to have kind of like a grass median in certain areas. Okay. And, and back in the early 80s, MDOT came through and put that turn lane in. Of course, at that time, the traffic is half of what it is today. Sure. Mm -hmm. We were looking, looking at somewhere around 16, 18,000 vehicles today, per day back then. Today, it's 30,000 vehicles oh, wow. per day. And so just a rule of thumb, just very generic rule of thumb is when you reach that 15 to 16,000 vehicles per day in a corridor, you need to put turn lanes in. So that's what MDOT did. When you start reaching 40,000 vehicles a day, you're looking, you need to go ahead and begin to look at capacity for maybe a six lane corridor. Laurel's not to that standard yet. So that's the reason why we're looking at trying to modify the left turns and try to make sure that we can safen that road up and increase the efficiency of it. Sure, and uh, you know, change is hard, but this similar projects have been done around the state. So, for instance, State Route uh, 
12 in Starkville. Um, I know you can probably mention some other ones down in the Southern District, but this has been done before. And, at, you know, at the completion of these projects, they have been effective, correct? That's correct. The, one of the first ones I actually did was in 2009, 2010 in Gulfport on US 49. We had a corridor from Turkey Creek all the way up north to close to O'Neill Road where we did this exact same treatment. Mm. And a lot of the concerns that uh, your business community are, are tasked with in Laura right now, Gulfport business community had the same concerns. And today, all of those businesses are still functioning. In fact, there's been more business development since we put that in because now motorists are able to travel through that corridor, not get stuck for congestion and make it easy to get around. So it's been done there. It's been done in Hattiesburg on US 49. Uh, there's a project just recently on 49 in Richland, just south of Jackson. It's been completed. Uh, we are looking at other corridors throughout the state. Uh, actually, Pascagoula US 90, this has been done on that entire corridor. So it's this is kind of the treatment that we're looking at to solve some of those left turn conflicts. And it's not just Mississippi. It's all the states in our in in Ashto, I guess our our uh, state transportation development district that's all of them are looking at this same treatment if you go to Iowa they have the exact same thing that we're looking at mm -hmm. here and if you go to Tennessee they have the exact same thing in Tennessee up on Germantown Parkway so it depends on the type of traffic you've got the capacity of the road and the type of accidents that are occurring gotcha gotcha uh, I know you guys have had a lot of public meetings a lot of kind of outreach to the, the communities to get feedback on that what's kind of the next step what I know it's a little bit of a timeline uh, before construction may get started but what kind of the next steps here right right now we're fine-tuning the, the the design we've got a good bit of the design done we've taken some of the comments from the comment period and we we incorporate the the comments that people put in you know we're sure. typically not looking at the one that says i just don't want it <laughs> right. you're you're looking at the ones that says hey have y'all thought about this or how does this person you know get into their their business or how do i commute and in those we can actually address those sure. and so we're in the final stages of trying to address those comments okay. from that that public outreach that we did earlier and then we kind of touched on it but you're really looking kind of maybe 2024 late 2023 kind of getting that uh, getting the ball rolling on actually getting it to construction out there right right this is this is a high hazard safety improvement funds that we're looking at to do this based on the accidents that have occurred there uh, typically we're looking at letting the project maybe late 23 and then you would probably see contractor that would be out there in maybe spring of 2024 uh, one thing to consider this isn't necessarily a widening project so most of the work is going to be contained in that center turn lane so almost all the driveways are going to stay just like they are. There, there are a few modifications. There is a, just a little bit of right-of-way that we have to purchase so trucks can make the turnaround. Uh, but at the end of the day, the majority of the work's in the median in that center turn lane, and it's just going through there, placing a curb, pouring island pavement, and making sure that we move those new lefts in the, in the place they need to be. Got a little bit of time before before it takes place. We just definitely want to get the folks out there, make sure you're aware, but do have a little bit of time before we get started there. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And one more stat I didn't mention uh, that we talked about before recording is the third more third most accident-prone corridor in the state. So, again, safety, wow. safety, safety. Um, that's why this project is getting done. Kelly, uh, before we get you out of here, is there anything else you want to kind of mention on the project, any message, you know, to the public you want to provide? Uh, the main thing is we, we appreciate their comments. You know, it, you can call MDOT and ask the question. We'll be glad to answer any questions that anybody has on the project. And we've been doing that pretty successfully, I believe. The uh, other thing is, is that at the end of the day, MDOT is trying to make that road safer. You know, it's every, MDOT understands the business community and a lot of the other business communities in all of these other cities that we've done this have had the exact same concerns that Laurel does. And it's a valid concern. It's, uh, there's two people that, there's two things that people really don't like. Uh, the first thing is change, and the second thing is the way things are. So at the end <laughs> right, of the day, like we've got to we've got to try to make it safer. So there is going to have to be a little bit of change, but it will work better in the future once that change is made. Excellent, excellent. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for uh, coming in and talking to us about the State Route 15 project in Laurel. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely. So we'll just go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Uh, thank you to our listeners out there for tuning in to the Extra Mile podcast. Uh, remember, you can watch and uh, listen to episodes. Go to gom.com forward slash the extra mile. Uh, remember to follow us on social media at Mississippi Via T is the handle. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, etc. 
want to thank our uh, producer, Katie Hornsby, our editor, Drew Hall. They do great work behind the scenes. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. Uh, tagline, remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi Highways.